The Dynaco ST70 is probably one of the most timeless, iconic tube amplifiers to have been ever made. It was made in 1959, and by the time it was discontinued, some sources say that it has sold over 350,000 units. Yeah, and yes, I have one here with me. In fact, I have owned the Dynaco ST70 multiple times throughout my audiophile journey, and we'll talk about my experiences in the past, present, and if it measures up to the modern day tube amplifiers that we see today. Yes, you heard me right. The Dynaco SD70 was introduced first in 1959. That is decades, decades ago. And what was that saying about a great product? Right, they stand the test of time. And you can truly say about that about the Dynaco ST70. As many tube amplifiers, even to this day, has been inspired by the Dynaco ST70. Not to mention the diverse, the one of the most diverse I've ever seen in the audiophile world in terms of modifications available, upgrades, repair. It is just so diverse, but more on that on the later part of this video. First of all, let's take a look at the unit. It is using four EL34 output tubes, one GZ34 or 5AR4 rectifier tube, and two 7199 input driver tubes to effectively output 35 watts of power into 8 ohms. Now that's not a lot of power, but let me tell you, those 35 watts, pure love. It has the classic screw-on vintage binding post on the back, if you can even call that a binding post, but we'll talk about the solution for that in the later part of this video as well. And of course, you have two RCA inputs in the front for the right and left channel, which is a little bit weird if you compare it to modern day standards of having RCA or inputs in general in the back of the unit. There's a switch in the front that can be often mistaken for a power switch, but this is actually to change stereo to mono. Yes, you can run two of these to effectively have them as mono blocks. But in this video, we'll concentrate on the stereo application as that was the most popular way this amplifier was used and because I only have one unit with me. Compared to today's standards, the Dynaco SC70 is a compact and a smaller tube amplifier with a cage that comes with it that is pretty vintage looking in my opinion. Nevertheless, the Dynaco ST70 was sold as a kit as well, often referred to as Dyna Kit. And at the time of its release, it was sold for $100. Now convert that to today's money, according to this website, it's about $1,000. And that is exactly what these Dynaco ST70s go for nowadays. Of course, depending on condition. And actually, funny information right here, the Dynaco SD70 is often coined as the poor man's Macintosh because of how cheap it was, inexpensive it was, and how good it sounded for the money. It often won awards compared to many higher end components at the time it was released. Now I know that some audiophiles, especially vintage audiophiles, some of my friends are very adamant about keeping vintage units as vintage as possible in its original condition, including the capacitors, However, it is my strong belief that you need to recap these units as they are pretty darn old and they're probably not within spec. And I'll go for us to say that recapping these amplifiers is a huge benefit as if anything has improved over the years with tube amplifiers is that the parts are now better. So by recapping these with better parts that are equal value is an extreme service to it sonically. And yes, I have heard one that has not been recapped and one that has been recapped and is a totally different amplifier. The one that has been recapped sounds a lot more quiet and seems more like what I'm supposed to be hearing, whereas the non recap version can have various problems as well as being out of spec. So just keep that in mind. And the associated cost of recapping these units are not all that expensive. Could be ranging anywhere from $300 to $500. And let me tell you, it's well worth it because once you recap them, they're probably trouble free for many years to come, at least 20 years in my opinion. And for those exact reasons, the unit that you see here has been fully recapped 
And some parts were already recapped when I got it, but I decided to recap the rest so that they are fully new and the best they can be. Now, talking about my first experience with the Dynaco ST70. In fact, this was my first tube amplifier ever. Now, let me tell you, the experience was horrendous. Yes, you might expect that I was, oh my God, like blown away, but actually I had the Dynaco ST70 at the wrong place. And that was when I had the Magnapan 0.7i speakers. I was driving them at the time with a monoblock from Meitner, the MTR 101s. And even then, the, the story goes that the magnet pans were not driven properly and I was trying to find the right match for it. And you guys know the story there. I eventually landed on Hegel and I found the Hegel to be a perfect match with magnet pan speakers. But when I tried the Dynaco ST70, my first tube amplifier with the magnet pans, it was just a no-go. It just didn't sound right. It sounded like floppy, veiled, muddy, and just, just, just disgusting. Now, eventually I got some vintage JBL and Tannoy speakers, as you guys may know from my story. And I had them with Meitner monoblocks and it sounded pretty good. And then I switched it to the Dynaco ST70 because I wanted to try it again. And even then I wasn't a total fan. In fact, at the time I felt like the Meitner monoblocks had more bass. So going from the Meitner monoblocks that was crisp and clear and really good bass authority to the Dynaco ST70, I felt like the bass fell apart and everything seemed a little bit more janky in terms of the sound presentation. Nevertheless, I had the ST70s running the 10 OS for a while, and then I decided to switch back to the Meitner's. And then I started scratching my head. I was like, huh, why do I want to go back to the Dynaco ST70? For some reason, I wanted to hear the Dynaco ST70s. So I switched it back and I was in total Nirvana. And you may be thinking, how does your impression change that much? And I was thinking the exact same thing. Don't get me wrong. I was like, how did my impression change? Like, what am I missing from the Meitner's that I'm getting from the Dynaco ST70 despite the lack of bass control and despite the lack of that solid state feeling, right? That, that linearity, that kind of crisp and clear detail, you didn't get that with the, with the Dynaco SD70. But what you did get eventually I learned by going back and forth and going back and forth was that the mid range on the Dynaco SD70 with the right speakers like Tannoy, JBL, uh, some sensitive speakers, it really brought that mid range magic to the table and that tube airiness, the mid range seems like it was more holographic and more Tan tangible, more, more like as if I can grab onto the singer. So that is what I learned the first time I got the Dynaco ST70. And at the time it was not recapped. Now, fast forward, I decided to take my Dynaco ST70 and then recap it. Now, once I recapped that unit, that was a totally different amplifier. The bass that I thought was a little bit lackluster was more tighter. Definitely not as tight as a solid state or even today's modern day tube amplifiers, but it was better. And the high frequency was quieter. Overall, the sound noise floor was quieter. And the mid-range magic, that, that feeling of holographicness where I can grab onto the singer, that sound staging and holographicness improved quite a bit. So now I had this room filling holographic sound with my Tannoy and JBL speakers that really put me in a place of Nirvana. And for the price I paid for the Dynaco SD70 at the time, which was about $500 at the time or, or even less, that was absolutely a steal. And even to this day, when I think about that system, the sound I was getting for that kind of money, I'm still mesmerized by that mid-range magic that the Dynaco SD70s brought to the table. Now, fast forward a lot, and today we have the Dynaco SD70 again to see if my impression of them has changed, especially after hearing many more tube gear over the years in various different price categories, but also because now we have different sensitive speakers that I have experience with, like the Orendo 1723 THX, 
or the tecton lowers with the beryllium dome tweeter. The triart open baffle home loaded speakers that I just made a video about. And also this new speaker from Endo Audio that I will not share too much of because it is coming very soon and it's a very unique speaker. And of course, the classic Klipsch speakers that I have, the new RP600M Mark II, as well as the floor stander. And let me tell you that my impression of them has not changed. In fact, my opinion of the sound of the Dynaco ST70s have elevated a few notches because I have a better understanding of the sound of the Dynaco SD70, plus I have a better room now, plus I have more modern speakers, plus I have found ways to make the Dynaco SD70 sing even more. And I'll share with that with you in this video. But just going over the general sound characteristic of the Dynaco SD70, when set up done right, this amplifier I'm telling you has good enough bass presence it doesn't extend low low and have really grippy bass and punchy dynamics like a solid state or even compared to modern day tube amplifiers like the Wilsonton R300, 300B amplifier, or even the R8 that I reviewed and raved about years ago. But let me tell you, when you hear this amplifier, you're not really hearing it for the bass, but the bass is not like totally fall, falling apart especially with the secret that I will share with you, which is really not that much of a secret. But anyways, the bass is more full blue. It is not necessarily tight, but it is a room filling kind of atmospheric bass as if you have you know, a subwoofer, right? As if you have an open baffle subwoofer. It makes the speakers load the room in a way where it's atmospheric. It is not the tightest bass, but it is round and enjoyable. And it does have a little bit of that tendency to elevate that mid bass, giving you a little bit of that exaggerated warmth. And that is what this amplifier is really about, that warmth in the mid range. When you plug in this amplifier, you're pleasantly surprised right off the bat and you want to play jazz. Even if you don't enjoy jazz, you want to play jazz because those horn instruments and guitars and it's just saxophones, just brought to life, just brought to glory. And that magic cannot be simply explained with words, but you know if you experienced a good tube amplifier. It has that mid-range silkiness, that velvetiness. Now, my one of my mentors, when, they, when he used to use the word like velvety, I was thinking to myself, what does that mean? Now, my best way to explain it is that it's like touching a really soft cloth or silk, opposed to touching a very clean surface uh, like a marble tabletop. So a solid state amplifier would be the really clean marble tabletop versus this Dynaco SD70's mid-range being like that silky, velvety kind of feeling. And that's kind of like the sonic characteristic you get when you hear the mid-range of the Dynaco SC70 and a really good tube amplifier because it has that velvety, silky, effortless, kind of floaty and softness that is not really forward sounding and something that you can enjoy for hours on end without any type of ear fatigue. And that is all the way through the high frequency. The high frequency, when you have the right type of tubes, can sound really darn sweet. Even rivaling some 300B amplifier designs. Now, the key here is the pre-amplifier and that's the secret sauce to making the Dynaco ST70 sound its best. Don't make the mistake that I've made. In the past, I have used the Dynaco Pass 3 or similar matching pre-amplifier. And let me tell you that Dynaco pre-amplifiers are terrible at least from my experience. They can make the Dynaco ST70 experience just dark, dull, and just bloated sounding with so much dynamic range compression that it just feels like there is no dynamics to be had. And it's almost like you're hearing through a cardboard box. Maybe the Dynaco preamplifier I had at the time may have been out of spec and I needed to recap it, but I'm not willing to test that theory as my perfect solution is mating vintage tube amplifiers with modern day 
preamplifiers, such as the Dana Frips preamplifiers that I have here. Any of them really would work. Personally, I have experimented with the Dana Frips Hades and the Athena preamplifiers. And let me tell you, when you have that kind of matching going on with a really good, decent, you know, solid state or even tube, modern day tube preamplifiers that's really quiet, that runs into the Dynaco SD70, it allows the Dynaco SD70 to really sing and do what it's doing best, which is that mid-range silkiness and velvetiness. And in fact, even the bass is a little bit more tighter and a little bit more controlled when you have a modern day preamplifier with it. So across the board, the improvements are very evident when you pair a modern day preamplifier with the Dynaco SD70. Now there are exceptions where some vintage preamplifiers pre may work with the Dynaco SD70, but from my experience, vintage preamplifiers were not always the best match with the Dynaco SD70. And yes friends, the soundstage of this thing is gorgeous. Ah, just gorgeous. With the depth, holographicness. Now granted, the imaging is not as pinpoint as with solid state units or modern day tube amplifiers for that matter. However, when you pair it up with a modern preamplifier, like I said, the imaging does improve. The soundstage is actually kept pretty much intact, but the imaging within that soundstage is quite improved to where there is absolutely pretty darn good imaging to where you can pin pinpoint things, but not as you know, pinpoint drawing it out like modern day tube amplifiers or solid state amplifiers like I have mentioned. So overall, for the money, which you can get these for about a thousand Canadian dollars these days, or even lower, depending on the condition and if it has been recapped or not, again, it is just an amazing value in my books and really a timeless piece and exactly why I got it for myself to add into my collection. Now, as with all vintage units, there are possible problems and I'll go over a few common ones with the Danico ST70. First of all, the chrome finish or whatever metal finish this is can get deoxidized and start rusting. So you have to watch out for humidity as well as you know possible damage to the chassis, which you should always clean and make sure that it is in pristine condition as much as possible. But keep in mind that it's old unit and some rusting is inevitable when it comes to these units. The one I have here is quite in good condition, but you may find some other ones to have a little bit of rust and that is perfectly normal, believe it or not. And where that rusting is may be a big factor into your purchasing decision and pricing because let's face it, if it's rusting in front and I can see it, then probably don't want that for myself. But if it's a little bit on the back, not a big deal. Now, another problem that you may face and I have alluded to is the binding post on the back well, again, if you can't even call it that, it's these screw connections that you often see in vintage units. Now, there are very easy solution, cheap solution to it, which is these kind of binding post adapters that you can get. I'll link it in the description below for you to check out. They're often found on eBay, but you can also make little dongles if you can solder a binding post to hatch on to the uh, little screws. So you will definitely need these adapters if you are using banana connectors. And if you're using spades, you may get around with it, but if you have big spades, then that's also, it's going to be a problem. You want small spades. So again, adapter may be a good idea for a unit like this. Now, the third, but not really a big concern is the power cable. The power cable is hardwired to the unit. And personally, I don't really care for it because that's how a lot of vintage units are. But if you find that you want to use your own power cable, you can easily get that modified. And talking about modification, that leads me perfectly into the upgradability and the modification capability of the Dynaco or the Dyna kit. Now, remember that I told you in this video that this was actually sold as a kit as well. It was sold as a finished product, but it was also a kit, Dyna kit. So, that means that this amplifier is pretty darn easy to modify, upgrade, and do all sorts of crazy things to it. In fact, there's so many modifications out there that I can't even list all of it. I'll link to some in the description below for you to check out or consider. But again, very easy to work with. Again, a very good way to understand tube amplifiers if you want to get techy and kind of pride into the world of modification and tube amplifiers and so on. Very easy way to do that. 
And personally, I have to say, I have built about three of these units from scratch from a kit version, and it's pretty darn easy. And actually, it has helped me a lot to understanding tube amplifiers and building them. And at the end of the day, it is quite rewarding to build an amplifier like this or even modify it. Now, again, talking about modification, that brings us to the last portion of this video, which is the possibility of tube upgrades or often referred to as tube rolling. Now I have tried various, I mean various EL34 tubes in my time. And especially with the Dynaco ST70, I had the very good pleasure of trying out the Millard Double Getter XF2 tubes. Now these tubes are now a fortune to own. So while it is still to this day my favorite tube with any EL34 tube amplifier designs with that silky mid-range and just magic bloom, and while I do feel like the Danico SD70 is definitely worth it to purchase those tubes even at the ridiculous price these days, I have to find an alternative for myself but also others that may not want to spend that much on a Dynaco SD70 tube upgrade. So I scavenged the interwebs to try multiple different EL34 tubes and also the tubes that I have tried in my past times. And I've come up with few. The Millard EL34 tubes, not the vintage, but the reissue. And they're just okay in my opinion. And I tried the Tungsel as well, again the reissue. And they're again, just, just okay. Now ironically, the in most inexpensive tube that you can probably get, the JJ EL34 tubes, did extremely well with the Danico ST70. And it is pretty darn good. For the value, top choice. But if you want maximum sweetness and mid-range silkiness and bloom of the base and grip that is quite adequate, and my favorite choice was actually these tubes right here. These are the ones that came with these Dynaco SD70s and quite pleasantly, it works really well with these. It really gives you a lot of what the Dynaco SD70 is about. I still think that the new old stock, vintage, double getter, XF2 day code, Millard, made in Britain, those tubes are just phenomenal. But again, those are really pricey. So. Those two tubes, I think, is a really good choice. Now, if you want something even better than that and you have some cash to cash out on some really nice tubes, then I will suggest and recommend these tubes from Tube Doctor. Again, no associate or affiliation here whatsoever with Tube Doctor or any of these tube companies, but I, from personal experience, Tube Doctor tube has always been great. I did have the tubes from Tube Doctor that I tried on these units personally and I was very pleasantly surprised with the base authority that you were getting out of these Dynaco SD70s. So out of all the tubes, I think the Tube Doctor was number one in terms of base authority and bloom. It was quite surprising how punchy the Dynaco SD70s got with those tubes, um, while kind of retaining that mid-range and high-frequency silkiness. But for that mid-range and high-frequency silkiness, my favorite choice would still be these tubes right here, the ones that came with these Dynaco SD70s. So again, very easy to work with tube amplifiers, even tube rolling, and you hear the differences when you tube roll, which makes it really fun with these amplifiers. So yeah, that's pretty much it from me. And if you enjoyed hearing about my journey with the Dynaco SD70s, make sure you're subscribed so that you hear more about my journey in the future, in the future videos, you don't wanna miss it. And make sure to click that like button if this video was helpful to you or you found it entertaining because it helps my channel out tremendously and it doesn't cost you anything. So thank you, happy new year, and I'll see you guys in the next year. Peace.